Welcome to the Financial Planning for Canadian Business Owners podcast. You will hear about industry insights with award-winning financial planner and entrepreneur, Jason Pereira. Through the interviews with different experts with their stories and advice, you will learn how you can navigate the challenges of being an entrepreneur, plan for success, and make the most of your business and life. And now, your host, Jason Pereira. Hello and welcome to Financial Planning for Canadian Business Owners. I'm your host, Jason Pereira. Today on the show, I have Kylie Paul. Kylie is a business coach and CEO of Coaching with Kylie. And I brought her to the show specifically to talk about vision planning for business owners and what that means. I'm not going to give it away because she'll get into it right away. And with that, here's my interview with Kylie. Kylie, thanks for taking the time today. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. I'm excited. So Kylie Paul of Coaching with Kylie, how appropriate. Tell us about you and what it is you do. Thank you so much. So I have kind of restructured um, what I've done. And this is actually my third company, Coaching with Kylie, and it's built around vision planning. And what I've done in my previous two businesses and in my life in general has been extremely effective in organization and planning and how that drives me ahead and it allows me to accomplish my goals and drive me forward. So that's um, kind of what I have built this business around and have also implemented in my other businesses um, for the last seven years. Okay. So we're going to jump into vision planning succinctly. And what is this abstract concept of vision planning in actuality? So I'll give you a, a take a step back and uh, tell you kind of where it comes from. Sure. So I've been, uh, like I said, I've been in business for seven years, um, building and scaling my own businesses from scratch and um, on a huge journey of personal and professional development um, in line with that and really dove deep into that. I've uh, invested a ton of time. I've read probably close to 400 books in the last seven seven years. And um, the message that kind of boils down to out of all the mentors that I've had and all the influencers and all the books and everything the three steps of success that I've kind of um, curated from, from all the knowledge that I've consumed is you have to know what you want. You have to know where you are and create a plan to, to mine the gap. So just like your GPS of life, basically you have to know where you want to go, where are you right now? And then create the path to get there. So that's what the purpose of vision planning really is, is to get really in tune and clear on what it is you want. And this is in business and in life. And for me, like I'm a single mom, I own three businesses, business is life for me. And there's no real separation between the two, how glorious that would be if that were the case. But I kind of laugh at the term work-life balance because for me, I just have a life and I manage everything, you know? So vision planning is, is about life and business. And for a lot of people, if they don't own their own businesses, that could be life and career, whatever it is, or managing their life overall. So vision planning is deciding what it is that you really want in the three domains of life. So health, wealth, and love. And then in the wealth category, if you're a business owner, I have a huge structure of how to really get granular about each department of your business, each area of your business, get really clear on what it is you want, and then create the plan to get there. So yeah, that's, it's basically what it is in a nutshell. Excellent. So um, <laughs> much to unpack there. Work-life balance. You may have seen me smugly smile when I, when you said that, it's like, yeah, that's a thing. Someone once <laughs> told me that, you know, it's not so much balance as a blend. It's a work-life blend. And I was like, you know what, that kind of like makes more sense because balance almost says that you're isolating the two when, especially if you're a business owner, there is no leaving the job. Like there just, there never is. It's always on your mind 24 seven. And that's just the way it is, right? You don't have something that you're unaccounted. Like it's, it's like trying saying you can leave your child alone, right? You can leave your child alone without having to worry about them. Yeah. Good luck to you. <laughs> I mean, like unattended. No, exactly. I, I, um, I read something like an article from a top female CEO years ago, and I disagreed with it at the time. And she kind of described it as managing chaos and you shift your focus from one area to the next, and you can't have all, all the balls in the air at once, basically. And at the time I didn't really understand that and, and kind of was like managing chaos. My life isn't chaotic, you know, and kind of fought against it, but like going and learning more and, and having kind of more control over, over all aspects of my life now it kind of is. And it definitely is at certain times, you know, your business can be crazy at one time or your home life. Certainly I have two little boys that are super active. So, I mean, chaos, it's a really great word to describe what happens in the home a lot of the time. So what I, what I like to do is to create those time blocks and manage 
with the time that I have the most effectively as possible so mm-hmm. that I can enjoy time to focus on my boys and, and yeah. be present with them when I am actually with them. But no, you're right. And I really do sometimes wish that I could leave the office stuff at the office, <laughs> but I'm getting better and better as the years go on to complete all the tasks. And I plan so far ahead of time too, that I'm actually able to relax and be present with my kids when I have the time to be with them. So before we dive into the, the specific tactics, let's, let's talk about in particular, the breakdown of the three that you identified. And maybe actually before we do that, I'm going to very quickly talk about how it's interesting because there's an overlap between our businesses, of course. Like I, you know, the first things I talk about is what are your goals? Like, what is it you want out of life? And oftentimes people have never stopped to think about it. They've never been asked that, right? Or they have an abstract version of it. It starts off, and I always tell them like, look, this is, don't feel bad. Like the reality is you want to stop working at some point. Yes, okay. Ideally, when when I looked at you, you walk them through like, you know, what does that future look like, right? And because we were all so busy doing what we're doing today that we never stopped to think necessarily, except for in very abstract terms about what the future is going to look like. And you have the old Yogi Berra saying, which is adept, which is you don't know where you're going, you end up somewhere else. And that's the absolute truth. Uh, the difference being, of course, that you clearly, I mean, this is what your entire brag proposition is. You dive into that and help them structure on a, a much deeper level than, than I would ever do that. So let's talk about the breakdown and why these three first off, and then we'll dive into everything else in one at a time. Yeah. So the three domains of your life are health, wealth, and love. So in health, there's physical, mental, and spiritual. Mm-hmm. In wealth, there's financial, vocational, legacy. And then in love, family, social, and and fun, how you take care of yourself. And it's funny that you say that when someone hasn't been asked before what they want and what their goals are, I had never been asked before what I wanted, you know, like before my, my separation and after I was kind of getting resettled on my own and all this stuff, I had free time that I had never had before when I didn't have my boys at home. And I was so confused. I'm like, what do people do that, <laughs> that don't have kids and, and all this? I'm like, I, I have done everything. And then I had a life coach at the time who legitimately just asked me straight out, like, what do you want to do? And I had never been asked that before. So I really had to sit and too busy taking care of everybody else. Right. It's exactly. like, I'm an issue with the caregiver. I see it like, especially later on, like when you're taking care of someone who can't take care of themselves, your identity goes away. And I will say that I always caution people. The number one cause of divorce in my practice is empty nest syndrome. It's when somebody's identity was wrapped around the need to support someone else. And then that need disappears because they have a certain level of maturity. And now it's like they have a crisis of self, like they have no idea who they are anymore. So it is not a small thing. Um, It's something that we should all be more concerned about is making sure that we we know what we want, because otherwise happens all the time when people retire, they're ready to retire. It's just like, and it hits them. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all that time. I well, have no and that's the thing. Yeah. And it can seem overwhelming too, when you kind of say a broad spectrum like that, like, what do you want? But when you get really specific with your questions, like, like you said, you guide people and I guide people with the questions that I ask, it's fun. You know what I mean? To actually visualize the life that you want and plan out what the things that you want to do. And I mean, I went on like little mini adventures. I took myself around Southwestern Ontario, you know what I mean? And did little things different that I would never would have thought of before. Um, Mm -hmm. But it can be really fun when you actually get into the practice and open yourself up to thinking creatively like that. Absolutely. So let's go back to the three, three areas, right? And I think I can see where you're coming from with this is that you're breaking it down for them to make it easier for them to say, say, what do you want out of life? That's a big, broad spoken question, the scoping question, but those three make it a lot more actionable, right? It's like anything else. You break down a task into smaller components and it's easily digestible. So talk to me about how you came to focus on those three and what else you considered along the way. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I've done a ton of study over the last seven years, a lot of different kind of teachers and and influencers have different categories. You know what I mean? Some have nine, have some have six, some have whatever. And I broke it down into three with three additional steps to each one. Cause that's digestible. You know what I mean? If you say to someone like same, some similar to my uh, parameters to think about how you're going to well, get it. exactly. And my three steps to success, you know, if I said my like nine steps to success, I lost them. Like they're gone. <laughs> so I make it very digestible. If you say three, it's not intimidating, you know, and, and people can, can digest that and absorb it and start to wrap their brains around it. So 
I believe it's a pretty holistic view of every aspect of your life. I mean, you can get even more granular, you can argue certain things, but in terms of health, wealth, and love, everyone has a component that's going to touch on one of those three, you know, and, and if they want a full and and fulfilling life, then in my opinion, they would encompass all of those domains. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I think you've broken it down pretty healthily, uh, frankly, to three areas that are easily visualized. So let's, let's, so, I mean, I think to me, it's like, what do you want for your own longevity? What do you want for your, the lifestyle you want to live and who do you want to share it with is a lot of, I think the big three. So let's go into each one of those and talk to them. Well, actually, before we even go there, talk to me about how you start the conversation. So what is the first thing you say that these people have to do? Do you jump right into the components or are you, or is there some kind of easing them into this level of thinking? Yeah. So the first, I have a couple exercises before we even kind of get into the planning on, on each um, level. And the first one is what I call like the claiming your power questions. So I have a series of eight questions that kind of get someone in tune and kind of um, lets them sit with themselves for a little bit, you know what I mean? And get honest with themselves about what's important to them. What are their uh, top three driving forces? So the goal of the exercise is to uncover your top three driving forces in your life. What's most important to you, why you're doing what you're doing, what areas of your life demonstrate and show that these are important to you and why you're doing them, you know? So for example, I give the example a couple of times. If I were to set a goal, a health goal, a, a physical goal of running a marathon, you know what I mean? And then I close my eyes and I sat and thought about running a marathon. I would have like a negative body reaction, let's say like a negative, my shoulders would tense up. I would have a scrunchy face. And then I would know this is not in line <laughs> with one of my internal driving forces. This is not important to me. If you're going to set that type of goal and have that type of body reaction, you're not going to do it. That's the thing. Like you're, it's not going to happen. You're never going to run that marathon because it's not important to you. But if I think about working out with my trainer or playing sports with the kids or going on a kayak with the kids, you know what I mean? Something like that. And I sit, close my eyes and think about it. I'll have like a positive reaction. I'll smile naturally. You know what I mean? I'll have, um, yeah, a more positive reaction. And I'll know that that's aligned with what's one of my driving forces. And I'll actually do the actions that are needed to create the result that I want, you know? So the goal of the claim your power questions is to to discover those. So you're going to have three ideally that you can focus on. And then when you're doing your vision planning, you keep those in mind. And the more activities that you have around your driving forces, the more productive you're going to be, the better you're going to feel about yourself, the more confident you're going to be all this stuff, because it's in line with what's most important to you. Excellent. So, all right, let's talk about breaking down how you break down each of those three. So start with the health piece. How do you break down the three? What are the kind of takeaways that most people come away with and and how do they action that? Yeah. So I work from a kind of backwards model um, when we get into like the planning. So first, yeah, we go through health goals, physical, mental, and spiritual. So I write, I have them write down and, and think about a year ahead of time. So my favorite kind of activity to, to give to people is have them set the date for one year um, to the date from, from today, whenever that is, and think of your ideal life. You're the best, the best possible life you could have one year away from today and just free journal and make sure that they hit on all of those um, categories, health, wealth, and love. And sometimes there'll be a physical goal, let's say, and maybe not a spiritual one. And then we'll work on that in their journal exercise or how they're thinking. And I also have like a series of guided questions to ask, like in your best version of yourself, what do you look like? How do you feel? What is your energy level? What is your mindset practice? Do you have one? What is your spiritual practice? Do you have one? You know, and, and those things will bubble to the top, what's most important to them. And if it's not a driving force for them, then we don't focus on it. But I will ask kind of more specific questions along the way to, to see and to probe a little bit to see if there is something, something there that they want to work on. So what are we talking about here? Are we talking about they recognize that they're out of shape or they're not taking care of themselves to the degree that they want to, and you action that and, and typically, you know, what beyond, beyond just the actual motivation to start working out, is there, you know, sometimes they have deeper medical issues. How do they tackle those issues? 
Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> and so honestly, I haven't encountered that specific circumstance yet, but that could definitely be a possibility. And then we would seek a health care practitioner if that was appropriate for, for the certain action. But the next step is typically to look at their mindset around it. So we discovered what they want and now where are you? So they have to get honest with where they're currently at and take accountability and responsibility for that. And then look at their thoughts around where they're at, because your thoughts will be directly related to your actions, which are directly related to your results. So what thoughts are you having around your, your body right now or your energy levels or your health? And how is that contributing to your actions? If you have all negative thoughts and all destructive mindset around your physical appearance or your physical state, then that's contributing directly to your actions. So how do we shift your destructive mindset around your current physical state into a neutral or productive one, wherever they're at. Some people are pretty far gone and can only commit to getting to neutral. Then that's the starting point. And we just work from there and then the actions will follow and then the results will follow. And as they see kind of their action shifting and their results shifting, that's when the, there's more commitment to it, you know, and, and they kind of have that buy-in and they can, they're ready for, for the next step. Okay. So that's the health. Let's talk about the wealth side. How and to what degree do you get involved in this? I will get as involved as I need, as I need to get, you know, and I mean, I've been through this process too. Like I said, like I own three businesses. I've had to get control and regain control of my own finances and cash flow and recording and accounting and all that stuff, you know? So I've been through it. And I think that also gives a little bit of level of trust to who I'm working with, you know, and the fact that I'm able to be honest about things that I've gone through and things that I wish I that, that I had rectified sooner or gone through sooner, you know what I mean? And they have that kind of trust with me and, and can work with me. But yeah, so vocationally, we talk about career and goals and achievement and things like that. And then financial, yeah, bank account. Where What are your financial goals? Where do you want to go? What type of lifestyle do you want? So I'm, I'm not... <laughs> at the same level of you for financial planning and expertise, but I can certainly shift things in a, in a productive direction to even give them awareness of where they currently are at and then help someone think about what they want to look like in the future. You know what I mean? And what that actually their ideal lifestyle costs or entails. And often it's kind of funny because I'm sure you've been through certain exercises with people too. And people will probably think their absolute most extravagant lifestyle will cost millions of dollars a year and all this stuff. And when they actually write it down and take the time to go as extravagant as they can possibly imagine, they'll probably realize that it's not even close to that. Um, so that's not what they want. That's the reality of it. It's, it's absolutely it's so people's vision of it. The reality is, is that we get used to a certain lifestyle, the vast majority of us. Right. And it's nice to think and dream about like, Oh, I would, you know, I would really like to do all this, right? Or, you know, people have said to me, you know, in retirement, I really want to travel all the time. It's like, okay, so where do you want to go? Okay, great. Uh, how much traveling have you done before that? Oh, I never go anywhere. Okay, so you're telling me you want to go from zero per year to like putting up with airports six times a year. Maybe you should try a couple. See how you like this, right? And like, and you know, next thing you know, it's like, yeah, I, I don't need to go that much, right? Like you, you settle into what you know, right? So so it's, it's just so funny that oftentimes people think that the aspirational conversations around retirement are these like big, crazy, outrageous goals when more often than not, it's just like, what makes you happy? Like, just give me that. And like, let's work on that. And, and that becomes so much more attainable and takes so much pressure off them mentally that they don't have to go to that, to the lengths that they think they would need to ever get there. Well, and that's the thing, right? And they just don't bring that awareness to themselves and they don't take the time to really think about what they want. And that's why I said, I do the claim your power questions first to really get to know them and see what is important to you. What is your driving forces? Because if travel and, and uh, new experiences and luxury or whatever aren't revealed through those questions, then probably not something they're, they're going to focus on and, and be driven to do. Absolutely. So, okay, that's the wealth side, helping them realize what's realistic and what's not, I don't seem realistic, but what's necessary to them, which is just such a, such a goal-based skill that most people don't get. They think it's always about like this big aspiration. Let's talk about the love aspect. So the, to me, this is the who, right? So talk to me about the, you know, how you help them center in on what's important to them in, in the aspect of love. 
Yeah. So we have family, social, and and fun. And so family are, are your relationships with um, your spouse, your significant other, your kids, all your family members, you know, social is your friends and your professional network, your community. If you want to improve that, if you're happy with where it's at, you know, and COVID was a great litmus test, I think, for the majority of people of what is really important to them and do they enjoy their social activities as much as they thought they did, or if they want more or less, you know, so right now is actually a really great time to uh, reveal that in a lot of people, because we've had a year and a half of uh, different levels of isolation and, and regulations and all of that. So what did you like about it? What did you hate about it? You know, and what do you want to change? And then fun is, is asking yourself, what do you want to do? Like we talked about, touched on earlier, you know, what is important to you? What lights you up? What makes you excited? What inspires you that you want to do? So for example, it could be just having quiet time, you know, for some moms and dads out there, I'm sure that's super important and they don't prioritize that in their life. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Getting some peace and quiet where you think you might've gone deaf because the kids aren't in the house. Like those are great times. (laughs) We can't, we can't overestimate that. And it can be as simple as that, just having some quiet time to yourself, but actually asking yourself the question of, of what do you want to do? Why is, and and make sure it's aligned with what's most important to you and then making a plan to do it. So for me, I write out um, what I want to accomplish in in the year, like activities and experiences that I want to have for the whole year. And then I will literally mark it down in my calendar because I know my schedule and I know what weeks I have the kids and what ones I don't, you know, and some of them are activities with the kids and some of them are activities by myself. <laughs> And I write them in the calendar and then I do them, you know, because if I didn't make that time to write them down and then actually put it, put a date to it, something would come up. You know that as a business owner, no no question, something will come up and I will not do it. If it's on the calendar, forget it. It just doesn't exist, quite honestly. (laughs) Exactly. So that is um, a really fun thing. And it's, it's something that, I mean, the majority of people don't, don't do. And I'm actually like astonished (laughs) the more people that I talk to. And like you said, everyone's just kind of floating along, happy with status quo, settled into their life and um, haven't even thought about taking control over planning what they want. You know what? There's enough cognitive burden on the unit put on us by the universe that I don't fault anyone. Right. Just just even making sure you pay your bills, get home every day and deal with your family. I mean, anyone who's got kids knows that part, particularly about the, the family part. You know, there's so much. It's it's just it's always interesting to talk to young people who, who just seem to think they're all they all seem to think they're going to be billionaires. And it's like, really, if it was that easy Then we wouldn't have a list of them. That's all I'm going to tell you. Like if it, it wasn't that exceptional, we wouldn't publish lists of them because it'd just be everybody. And the reality is life gets in the way and life gets in the way of, of you may think, especially, you know, when you start step into places, well, this is inefficient, you know, then I was doing the optimal thing here. That's fine. That's because they've got a bunch of other things they got to worry about. And they don't have the time for optimal, but it doesn't mean it's not a valuable exercise. And doesn't mean if you do may take that time, you're not going to benefit from it dramatically. So, so we talked about the process, talk about the end result. Like, I mean, this has got to be the, the reason you do this because otherwise what's the point you must, must take great satisfaction from watching these people flourish. So talk to me about your success stories, people you've turned around. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so, it's so fun, even for me, taking things off my own list and and doing experiences with the kids and getting to see their experience with it and letting them enjoy and flourish and choose goals for themselves and, and us to execute on them. But absolutely. So I work with different, all kinds of businesses, different spectrum. So in the past couple of months, I've worked with a couple new businesses that even just allowing them and giving them the permission almost to write things down and to think outside the box and to take planning time seems to take an enormous burden off of their shoulders, you know, and to emphasize the importance of planning as a business owner. A lot of new business owners, and I mean, I was guilty of this at the beginning too, get stuck in the operational activities. And I call it kind of the hamster wheel, you know, of actions, but they don't have a plan to move them forward. So if they're just in the hamster wheel and doing actions, 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 then they're not seeing the results they want to see because they don't have that plan to, to move them forward. So, I mean, a couple of them made their plans and sent them to me. They were so excited to uh, go through the workbooks 
and set the plans. And then I've seen some of them, which is really gratifying, like post on their Instagram stories and stuff of them going outside for a walk. You know what I mean? And taking time for themselves and, and making sure that that was a priority and they were prioritizing themselves in that shifting their focus. Um, one of, one of my clients was, um, really concerned on, on one of the products that she was doing. And I, I told her, I'm like, you have put in so much time that you are losing money on this product now because you haven't accounted for the preparation time and the delivery and the back end stuff and all of this. So just reinstating and, and, and letting them know their worth and that their worth in the preparation time is the same as their worth in the execution of the program, you know, and, and to make sure that they're thinking about that and, and managing that for themselves. That's really fun. And I just finished actually a summer company cohort uh, with the small business center and that's high school and university students and allowing and giving them the permission to think outside the box and telling them that they're worthy to charge more than $5 for their services and things like that was really fun and seeing them shift. And a couple of them at the end, the last week, really, um, who were legitimately really confused and struggling with the whole entrepreneur thing had clicked, you know, had had that click in and, and got to, um, got to the place where they were re-inspired with what they were doing and we're able to share that. And I mean, you can see the change on their faces too, that they have actually enjoyed it now and they, they kind of get it and they're, they're reinvigorated to continue and they realize why they started it in the first place. So that's really fun. But so I'm, I mean, I'm glad I'm able to contribute in that way, but seeing the, the effects of the social programming on that age group was a little sad, honestly, but, uh, we'll, uh, We'll see. Hopefully they uh, have some valuable lessons that they can continue utilizing. Absolutely. Anyway, Kyle, this has been great. Thank you very much for taking the time. I think it's a very important exercise for all of us to sit back and make sure we understand what it is we actually want out of life. So visioning, especially, I would say, I can see the need for for coaching on this in particular when you are a in a high stress entrepreneurial position. It's one of those things that will fi- fall by the wayside if you don't get serious about it and have someone like you guide you through it. So thank you very much for taking the time to walk us through it. I appreciate the time, Jason. Thank you so much. That was my uh, interview with Kylie about visioning. I hope you enjoy that. And as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever it is you get your podcast. Until next time, take care. This podcast was brought to you by Woodgate Financial, an award-winning financial planning firm catering to high net worth individuals, business owners, and their families. To learn more, go to woodgate.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify, or find more episodes at jasonperera.ca. You can even ask Surrey, Alexa, or Google Home to subscribe for you.